Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the Ultimate Guide to Redstone. In this video, we will be talking about the final two common logic gates, and then after that, we're going to talk about all the obscure logic gates, and then we'll be completely done with logic gates. So, without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started. To start off, we have the XOR gate, which has the identification code B6. As you might get from the name, it's a lot like an OR gate. In fact, there's only one thing that's different about the XOR gate from the OR gate. So if you notice right here, it's starting to off looking a lot like an OR gate. If I have no input, I have no output. If I turn one input on, I have an output, just like in any OR gate like you'd expect. If I turn the other input on, I have an output, just like you'd expect in a regular OR gate. The only place it's different. If you have both inputs on in an XOR gate, it turns off. So that's the only thing that separates the OR gate from the XOR gate. In the XOR gate, the output is off if both inputs are on. That's the only difference. And it might not be completely obvious why this gate is so useful, but it's probably one of the more useful ones. It's There's so many different ways of thinking of the XOR gate. One way you can think of it is it's like, it's a toggle th thing. Every time you flip any input, the output will change, which is true. No matter what switch I flip in any input state, the output is going to change, no matter how I do it. So yeah, that's one way of thinking of it. Another way of thinking of it is that it has two signals that go through it, but it only lets one signal pass through at a time. If you try sending both signals through at the same time, it doesn't let it. That's another way of thinking of the XOR gate. Another way you can think of it is it's you're either getting input A or you're getting input B, but not both and not neither. You have to only have one of them. And again, there's a really large number of ways you can think of the XOR gate. I could go on if I really wanted to. Oh yeah, and by the way, the X stands for exclusive. So yeah. So, hopefully now you have at least the understanding of what it's supposed to be doing. And now, I'm going to go over here, and we are going to build this thing. So, considering it's called the XOR gate, it really shouldn't surprise you that much that I'm going to start with an OR gate. I'm just going to start with a slightly different design than the one we've been using. And I showed this design off in the OR gate video. So, yeah, it's just this design the one with the two inversions. And yeah, here we go, it's an OR gate. So, very simple. And there is a reason why I'm using this design. And that's because the easiest way of creating an XOR gate using redstone is starting with a regular OR gate, and then if you're getting input A and input B, just disabling the output. And I kind of gave it away what we're going to do there. We're just going to use an AND gate. And this is the reason why we're using this design, because the AND gate relies on two inversions, and what do we have here? We have two inversions. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take this, and we're going to have to test if we're getting this inversion or this inversion. So, the way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to raise it up a block, like this, and I'm going to do the AND right here. Now at some point we're going to have a torch coming off of it. For the time being, I'm going to place a torch here just so that we can see that the AND gate is working. So input A and input B, there we go, it's an AND gate. Now this doesn't quite help us, it gets us an AND gate, but it doesn't do anything yet. We still have to find some way of disabling the output if this AND gate is triggered. And the easiest way of doing that is placing a torch here. If we place a torch here, it powers both of these wires, which turns both of these torches off. And since these two torches are the only way we can get output, and they're both receiving power, therefore no output is possible. Now, that's the easiest way of creating an XOR gate. And of course, since the torch here only triggers based on the AND gate, this will never happen in any case except A and B. And that's sort of a rushed explanation, I'll be the first to admit. But, you know, it's just one form of logic. The logic that goes into it is not that important. This is just a design for a gate. What's really important about this gate is the concept of what it's doing. And that's why I'm sort of rushing through the logic. The important thing is it's just like an OR gate, but if A and B, there's no output. That's the important thing here, not the design. So yeah. 
And again, there's plenty of ways of thinking of this, and there's plenty more designs for it. So, yeah, very useful gate. And you'll see why when we go a little bit further into the series, because these things pop up everywhere. They're used in almost anything that has slightly advanced logic involves XOR gates in some form or fashion. So yeah, that's the XOR gate. And now, let's demonstrate how it can be used. One of the most common uses of an XOR gate is plugging it into your door. I know, Minecrafters absolutely love plugging logic gates into their doors. But the XOR gate, I think, arguably is the most useful logic gate to plug into your door, because it lets you control a door from both sides. You hit Because if you hit one switch, the door opens. Then you can walk through, and if, if you hit the other switch, the door closes. And it works like this no matter what state it's in. You can just walk through, open, close. Just like that. So I'd say, arguably, the XOR gate is the most useful logic gate to hook up to your door. And yeah, so have you ever wondered how people got that effect in their doors? They're using an XOR gate in some form or another. So that's one use. So, let's say you have a trap going into your base, so that if someone you don't want decides to stop by for a visit, they'll have this nice lovely trip to the void, or a pit of lava. Or maybe they get shot to death by a barrage of arrows, I don't know. You can use your imagination, there's a million traps that you can come up with. So, that's what happens if anyone tries to invade, but problem with this is, what about you? You still need to get into your house somehow. And if you have a secret entrance, well, then they'll probably discover that, and they'll probably go in that way. So, you know, another way is just having a way to enable or disable the trap. And one of the best ways to do this is with an XOR gate. Because if you flip the switch now, now the trap's disabled. Now you can walk over it. But normally, if you want to re-enable the trap, you have to walk all the way back over to flip the switch. In this case, I can just flip it up from here. Now the trap's enabled again, because I have it hooked up to an XOR gate. Now if you try to walk over, hey, I fall into a pit. And of course, ideally, you'd have these switches hidden somewhere, so that they don't just say, oh, hey, switch, let's disable the trap. Yeah. But you know, this is just an example. And hopefully you're not using a trap that's quite as obvious as having pressure plates like this. Maybe you'd have doors or something, so it's like they fall... Oh, nope. <laughs> something like that, I don't know. Y again, use your imagination. There's a million ways of creating traps. But yeah. But where f the XOR gate really shines is an advanced redstone. Almost anything that's done with numbers in redstone is done using XOR gates. Every mathematical operation is done with XOR gates. Every comparison function is done with XOR gates. Well, almost. Pretty much every comparison function is done with XOR gates. Yeah, it's it's a very important gate in advanced redstone. But even in s more basic redstone, hopefully you can see how it's useful. You know, so yeah. So hopefully you understand the XOR gate now. And now we're going to move on to the final gate of all the basic redstone gates. Okay. Here we are, the final common logic gate. After this, you will know, really, all the logic gates you'll need to create pretty much anything. So, yeah, if you can know all of these seven logic gates, you're set, pretty much. And this final logic gate is the XNOR gate. Now, the XNOR gate, predictably, is a lot like the XOR gate. The only difference is the input, or excuse me, the output is inverted. So you start off returning one, and it acts like a NOR gate at first. But the only difference between it and a NOR gate is that when both inputs are on, the output is on. So you know, it's like an XOR gate with the output inverted. If I inverted this, then you'll see, yeah, it's behaving just like an XOR gate. So I think that's probably the best way of thinking of it. It's an XOR gate with an inverted output. As identification code of B9, I almost forgot. As far as building it, in most cases the best way of building an XNOR gate is just taking an XOR gate and inverting the output. In almost every case, that's the best way of building an XNOR gate. Now, if you choose to explicitly build an XNOR gate, there are designs that do that, 
And those designs are typically better in the sense that they're a lot faster than doing it this way, but they're also really tricky just because of the way redstone works to do any ex nor gate that way. So, is it good to do it that way? Yeah, it's also really hard to do it that way. And that's why this is the only design I'm going to show you, because in most cases, yeah, this is what you're going to use. If you're, you really want a different output from the XOR gate, realistically, what you're going to do is you're going to invert something. So, you know, realistically, you're not going to build a unique XNOR gate in most cases. So that's why I'm only showing it to you like this. And again, like I said when I was showing you this design for the XOR gate, the important thing isn't the design. The important thing is grasping the concept of what's going on. Because that's really what you need to understand if you want to build redstone out of these devices. So yeah. And that's it. That concludes all of the seven big logic gates. So just a quick review, just for fun. We have the NOT gate, also known as the inverter. It inverts whatever you put in, S code U1. The OR gate, it turns on if any of the inputs are on, code B14. The AND gate, only turns on if both inputs are on, code B8. The NAND gate, just like the AND gate, except inverted output. The NOR gate, just like the OR gate, except inverted output. The XOR gate, which has the levers missing for some reason, which works just like an OR gate, but when both inputs are on, the output's off. And the XNOR gate, which is just like an XOR gate, but output is inverted. And these are the seven big logic gates. If you can understand these gates, not necessarily the design, but the concept, and you can just put together which ones go to what, you can build some pretty amazing redstone devices. Now, of course, there are some, a lot of circuits that can help you get across some common things that you don't do with redstone. And that's what we're going to talk about after we finish logic gates. But for now, what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to talk about the remaining logic gates, the final 11, I believe it is. Yes, final 11. And then after that, we'll talk about the basic redstone circuits. And yeah, and that's what we're going to keep doing in this guide. So thank you. See you next time.